Hi, I'm Grant with Terp Extractors. Welcome to Terp Headquarters. Today I'm going to be going over how to unbox an MK4 system with all of its turnkey items. Before we set up, we're going to want to set up in a well-ventilated area. We'll also want to have a couple key pieces of safety equipment handy. Our ABC fire extinguisher and our combustible gas leak detector. So let's get to unboxing. Alright, so we have our MK4 unboxed now. We should have our unit, an 8 foot 3 8 inch SAE hose, and our binder with our MK4C owner's manual and operating instructions. There should be two fittings on the machine labeled with a card. It says permanently attach the enclosed 3 8 inch SAE 8 foot hose to each of these fittings. So we can remove these cards, but make sure you wrench down this hose onto the machine. We'll now be unboxing our MK4 accessories box. First off, we should have our reducer sets. There should be two sets. One set is two by four inch reducers. One set would be two by three inch reducers. We should also have our clamps set. These should all have their gaskets included with them. As here I have the gaskets stuck inside the clamps. Our two inch clamp should have two screen gaskets for holding our material inside our column and reducers. Should also have our hose set. If you purchased a hose set, the hose set will contain a total of four hoses. Should have a one foot or 18 inch hose. A 3 8 inch six foot hose. And two quarter inch six foot SAE hoses. Inside the bag should also contain a three way inline vacuum valve and our reducer fitting for SAE 3 8 hose. Should also have, if you purchased a coil, the stainless steel condensing coil should also have come with an extra quarter inch SAE hose. Should also have a vacuum hose. We may have stuck the vacuum hose to a pressure test adapter that can connect from your vacuum hose to your machine and this adapter will allow you to hook up an industrial quick coupler from an air compressor so that you can test your machine under just positive air pressure from air. You should also have a filter dryer, at least one. We're going to need to put this on the inlet of our recovery pump. We're going to cut open our two pound and five pound column box. There should be a five pound column inside the box that will contain also a two pound column stuffed inside of it. So we'll take those out. Now we'll be unboxing our high vacuum pump. This will be removing any oxygen from any closed system that we'll be introducing butane into. We'll want to make sure that we fill the uh, vacuum pump up to the proper level so that it runs appropriately. Now we'll unbox our ignition proof recovery machine. We'll use this to recover refrigerant from our extractor to push back towards the storage tank so that we can reuse it. This should be an oilless recovery unit. We will not have to add any vacuum pump oil at all to this. So the last things we're going to need are we're going to need our refrigerant storage tank. This should be a DOT certified tank. It comes supplied with 10 to 15 psi of nitrogen. Before we pull a vacuum on it, you'll just simply open the valve to release a little bit of nitrogen gas before hooking up your high vacuum pump to evacuate it of all of its atmosphere. 
Next thing we're gonna need is a refrigerant scale. It should be rated for flammable gas. Last thing we're gonna need is our gas leak detector. Now we're ready to go ahead and set up for our basic distillation. So now we're set up for distillation. We should have purchased a tank of in-butane non-odorized. This will run a quarter inch hose from the outlet of this tank to the number four input on our extractor. We should also have a high vacuum pump hooked up to the number one vacuum valve on our extractor. From the outlet of our extractor is the number five recovery valve. We will run a 3 8 hose to the inlet of our recovery machine through a filter dryer. The outlet of our recovery machine will have a short quarter inch hose running to the inlet of our number six vacuum valve. We call this the after pump inline vacuum valve. Another quarter inch hose from the outlet of this vacuum valve running to the inlet of our coil. From the stainless steel condensing coil, we will also run a quarter inch hose to the vapor valve on our recovery tank. So we should make sure that all of our hoses are tight. We should have permanently attached our eight foot 3 8 SAE hose to our MK4 from top end cap down to our number two liquid valve. All of the hoses should be secured with two wrenches. Once we're set up for distillation, we we'll wanna make sure our ventilation system is operating properly. Once we open our tank and introduce butane into the machine, we'll want any possible leaks of gas to be evacuated from our area as soon as possible. Once we've performed our distillation, we'll be ready to set up for extraction. So we will not need our dirty refrigerant tank anymore. We'll move the hose from our original supply tank to our recovery tank with our clean refrigerant in it. This will be used as our solvent to extract our oil. Next thing we'll need to do is remove our top end cap and place our column on top of our input number four. Now that our material column is fully packed and clamped onto the machine properly, we're ready to evacuate the machine and system of all oxygen before introducing gas from our recovery tank into the bottom of the column to flood up to the top and down our liquid line to our collection vessel. Once in the collection vessel, we can heat it to its boiling point to evaporate so that the recovery machine can put it back in our tank. Schematics for these two setups are in your operation manual as well as steps for operation for any more information, please visit turfextractors.com. Thank you for watching.